Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today's topic is stains at your ceiling around bath fans. Don't contact a roofer for this. I know, I know, it's everybody's knee-jerk reaction to contact a roofer as soon as you see stains on your ceiling, but in the case of a bath fan, it's almost never related to anything going on at the roof. It's a building science issue. It's condensation. What happens is you turn on your bathroom exhaust fan, and it, by the way, this only happens in really cold areas. You turn on your bath fan, and then you've got a duct that goes through your attic, the very cold attic, and you get all this crazy condensation that happens inside that ductwork, and then the water drains down, it hits the ceiling, and then it stains it. This is a building science issue. It has nothing to do with your roofer. So today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the steps you can take to help reduce the potential for condensation inside that duct, at least to cut it down enough to the point where you're not going to get stains on your ceiling. You're surely always gonna get a little bit of condensation, but we'll try to minimize it. Number one, if you don't have an insulated duct inside of your attic, fix that. The duct needs to be insulated when you're in a cold climate. Here's an example of one that wasn't insulated. And you know, you can see I'm holding my flashlight up against the side of it. You can see there's a ton of water inside of that duct. I mean, that's like cups of water sitting inside there. So in Minnesota, we want it insulated. To get this properly insulated, don't try to insulate the duct itself. That's a bad proposition. You're gonna spend a ton of time doing it and it's gonna be basically worthless. My advice would just be to replace the duct with an insulated duct. Get one that's already insulated. You'll spend 30, 40 bucks for a duct at the home improvement store. If you wanna order one online, you can do that. You'll probably pay a little bit more, but that's the only way to go. And also, my advice would be don't use a metal duct. I know people like the idea of using a metal duct because you have a smooth interior, you cut down on airflow restriction because you don't have all these ribs, you don't have all this turbulence, but it's not worth the penalty you pay for having a metal duct with, which has a much higher thermal mass, which means you've got all this metal, it takes a long time for that bath fan to warm up the metal and get it past the point of condensation during the winter time, you're never gonna have your fan, well, you probably won't have your fan running for long enough to get it warm enough. And it also conducts the cold from the terminal much better than plastic. So don't use a metal duct for your bath fan. You Use something cheaper. Yeah, I'm telling you to use something cheaper in this case. So that's step number one. Step number two, use the shortest length of ductwork you possibly can inside the attic. The more exposed duct you have in the attic, the more cold you're gonna have, the more condensation you're going to end up with, and the lower the performance you're gonna have on your bath fan. So use the shortest run possible. I've been in attics where they, they pump it up and they run it clear across the attic all the way to the other side to vent out a gable end. Vent out the other side, or vent out the roof where it's a lot closer. But venting up through the roof isn't my First choice, I'd always prefer to run it out of gable end, but above all, use a short run. That's, that's the most important piece. Next, make sure that you have a proper terminal for your bath fan. Just pointing it at a roof vent is bad news. You're gonna have tons of cold just dumping down that duct, and you're gonna get, in, get a lot of condensation forming that way. It's much better if it's tightly connected to a dampered terminal. That's the only way you should have it. Uh, I stopped by the store to pick up a damper terminal. This is an example of one. This is the, uh, this is the Brone 636. It's by far the most common one we see. I'd say easily 75% of them out there are this exact model. And you can see that there is a damper in here. I'm gonna lift it up. It's kind of tough to see. Here, let me, let me pop this screen out. We'll get that screen out. Now it's a little easier to see. There's the damper going up and down. Okay, so that's what it should look like. If it's proper, you'll see a damper inside there. And the, the damper or the backdraft damper is gonna help reduce the amount of cold air that just dumps back down into that duct. 
It's also a good idea to get inside the attic and make sure that the ductwork is tightly connected and you don't have any gaps where cold air in the attic can just dump back down into the ductwork. We see this happen on used houses and new houses. It doesn't matter if you've got brand new construction, it happens all the time, especially after you have your roof covered and replaced. A lot of the time the roofers will come through and they'll be doing all their work, they'll put new nails in, the nails will knock something loose and it'll fall down inside the attic. And if your roofer isn't going back into your attic to check to make sure all the bath fan ducts are tightly connected, it's a good idea for you to do it as the homeowner. Most roofers do not do this. And then finally, my advice would be to check that damper annually. I, I would call this regular homeowner maintenance to make sure that nothing is obstructing it. If you've got a wasp nest or some other nest inside there, that will obstruct the damper and it will not work. Use caution when you're doing this, of course, but make sure that the damper opens and closes freely. That's the last thing you can do to help prevent cold air from dumping down inside there and causing stains at your ceiling. That's all I got for you today. I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.